Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Sophia, your host. If you ask the vast majority of Muslims what they think about honor violence, the answer would likely be that these crimes have nothing to do with Islam. So what then do Muslims have against the film that speaks out against these crimes? The Honor Diaries reports to be the first film to break the silence on our honor violence. It features nine women's rights activists in dialogue about the prevalence of domestic violence in Muslim-majority societies. Several Muslim activists have taken to social media to speak out against the film. I'm here with Aziza Kanji. Aziza is a graduate of the University of Toronto Law School and Programming Coordinator at Noor Cultural Centre. Aziza has co-authored a critique of the Honor Diaries and she's here to explain to us why she finds the film so problematic. Aziza, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Thank you for having me, Sophia. Now, what is it that you find so troubling about the Honor Diaries? Because, you know, some might say, well, you just don't want to hear criticism about Islam, any sort of criticism. So this is your problem with the Honor Diaries. But I'm suspecting that it's something more than that. So maybe you can tell us. There are several layers of problems with um, the Honor Diaries. The first um, lies with the producers of the film. The film is produced by a group called The Clarion Project, uh, which is notorious for producing Islamic phobic films. Some of their uh, previous offerings have been Obsession, Radical Islam's War on the West, The Third Jihad, Islam's War on America, these types of films. And so naturally, when you have a group devoted to spreading Islamophobia, creating a film about Muslims violence against women, their um, right from the beginning is cause for suspicion. Mm -hmm. The second problem is the fact that it portrays itself as the only movement um, amongst Muslims devoted to addressing violence against Muslim women. It calls itself the first film to break the silence on honor violence. And this completely ignores all of the efforts by organizations throughout the Muslim world, as well as Muslim organizations in North America and Europe who are working on the ground in communities to address these issues. The third problem is the way that the problem of violence against women is framed. It's portrayed as a problem to do with Muslims' culture. Uh, the very tagline of the film is, culture is no excuse for abuse, which signals that they're really locating the problem of violence as a cultural problem in, mis in Muslim communities, rather than a problem to do with institutions, with politics, with economic situations, uh, whereas experts who study these, these issues um, indicate that the problem is not some um, trans-geographical, trans-historical problem of Muslim culture. The issue is really with uh, current social and economic problems that give rise to violence, not only in Muslim communities, but in communities all over the world. As we know, patriarchy is a global phenomenon, not a Muslim phenomenon. Um, and it's also a phenomenon that exists in the Western world as well, not just in the Muslim world. Exactly. And one of the most pernicious problems with Honor Diaries is that it claims that it's Muslims who are bringing the problem of violence against women into um, Europe and North America, as opposed to those being problems that are endemic in um, Western communities. And what this does is that it really papers over the tremendous issues of violence that women in North America in Europe face while locating the problem solely in Muslim communities. And this isn't good for Muslim communities. It engenders Islamophobia against them. And it's also not good for uh, women in the West who have been working very hard to address problems of violence, of political underrepresentation, of economic marginalization. And in covering over these problems, the, um, a film like Honor Diaries really works against all of these anti-patriarchal efforts on the ground. Mm -hmm. So if the Clarion Fund has this reputation already, why do you think that you know, it, it ha the, the film is so popular? I mean, it was shown at the Ch Chicago International Film Festival. It won an award mm -hmm. at the St. Louis International Fim Film Festival. So what's going on here? I think the film really plays to many um, prejudices that are endemic in um, Western discourse about Islam, that Islam and Muslims are uniquely misogynistic and uniquely violent against women. And this um, 
framing really serves several functions. First of all, it helps to cover over, as I said before, the problems with violence against women in uh, North America and Euro European communities generally. And it also helps to justify um, several enterprises in the war on terror, the wars in Afghanistan and the wars in Iraq, were partially justified by citing the imperative of intervening to save the lives of Muslim women from these barbaric Muslim men. Mm -hmm. And the idea the idea of the dangerous Muslim man who imperils Muslim women is also used to justify domestic um, surveilling and disciplining of Muslim communities. And so I think that Honor Diaries, the narrative communicated in it, really serves to bolster several um, Islamophobic strands which are very dominant in uh, Western discourse about um, Islam. But at the same time, we also have to remember that uh, recently a screening of Honor Diaries at George Washington University scheduled for September 11th uh, was canceled thanks to the interventions of CARE. And so, um, there is progress being made against the very problematic narrative about violence against women that is communicated by Honor Diaries in favor of a more nuanced um, understanding that takes account of the varied circumstances and uh, varied institutions responsible for producing violence against women and that uh, can really promise a more responsible and effective intervention on these important issues. Mm -hmm. Can you speak more about that? How, what would a fair and, and just treatment of honor violence look like to you? Um, what sort of film would you like to see? So I don't have to I don't have to speculate about this because there has been academic work that treats the problem of violence against women okay. in Muslim communities in a serious and nuanced way. And these types of interventions don't talk about Islam or Muslims in broad brush strokes as if Islam and Muslims are the same no matter where they are and no matter uh, what time um, the, these communities are um, are located. Um, and so these types of interventions or these types of studies look at the specific circumstances and specific places that produce violence against women. Um, they look at the specific legal, economic, political circumstances that give rise to these phenomenon. And they also look at um, local efforts uh, of women's organizations and other organizations on the ground who are working in these communities. Mm -hmm. In other words, they don't prioritize the point of view of uh, Western women activists from outside who are looking at their uh, poor, beleaguered Muslim sisters elsewhere and intervening to save them. Instead they focus on uh, local initiatives and the agency of the Muslim women themselves in addressing these problems that they face. Mm -hmm. Aziza, can you speak a little bit about some of the generalizations and stereotypes that are the specific ones that are found in this film, The Honor Diaries? The fact that the film is uh, generalizing is made very apparent in the opening sequences. For example, when uh, which dem uh, shows a montage of clips of different violences against Muslim women. It shows uh, women being uh, whipped and stoned in Afghanistan. It shows uh, women not being allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia. Um, it shows uh, women uh, having their uh, genitals cut mm -hmm. in Africa. But it doesn't tell you when or where any of these violences are occurring. And so what you get is just a general picture of tremendous violence being committed against Muslim women no matter where they are. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't point out that those things don't necessarily happen in every Muslim country, right? No, and even in those countries there are different uh, dynamics, exactly. different things mm -hmm. happen in different communities. and. Um, there are different groups working to intervene in different ways on the ground. So for example, um, in some African countries, there are uh, efforts by women's organizations uh, to move away from uh, genital cutting as the uh, ceremony marking a, woman's uh, a girl's transition into womanhood and instead have other symbolic ceremonies. These are the types of interventions that are um, that are in tune with the uh, values and history of the community. They're not imposed from outside, they're done locally. And so those are the types of things that are really more effective, but they're completely covered over in the type of narrative presented by Honor Diaries, which just sees the Muslim world as monolithic and 
uh, uniformly and uniquely violent against mm -hmm. women in a way that also ignores, uh, by the way, the role that Western military interventions, for example, in the history of colonialism have played in creating the context for the type of violences that women face in these countries. Mm -hmm. Do you think Islam, though, is, is at all to blame for uh, honor crimes? Uh, I mean, can, can you speak about that a little bit? Should Muslims speak out more about uh, honor crimes? First of all, I think the idea that Muslims everywhere have a responsibility to, to speak out about anything that other Muslims are doing that is bad, whether it's terrorism, ISIS, or whether it's honor crimes. I think that that itself presupposes a monolithic, unified Muslim community that can bear collective responsibility for these types of crimes that are committed against women or against civilians. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that the obligation or onus that is often placed on Muslims to speak out against these types of crimes itself reflects the way that Muslims are racialized and made into monolithic community in a way that is very problematic. That being said, um, I think the language of Islam, no doubt, is often used to justify um, these types of crimes when they're committed. But that's just because Islam is the is is a language that purports to, that people use to try to provide legitimacy to whatever actions they do in the way that you know in the West we might use the language of liberalism to provide the lang uh, to provide legitimacy to the types of violences we might commit. It's it's not. Um, it's not caused by Islam, even if Islam is perhaps the language that people use to legitimize it. And at the same time, there are many Muslim women who use Islam as a source for women's liberation and empowerment and to argue against these types of crimes. Aziza, thank you so much for your insightful comments. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Sophia. We'll take a break when we return the Bible in Arabic. We'll be reviewing that book.